it. Maybe if there's two of us going out with them. Okay. I'm going to want. Let me just set it down here. I'm going to just do it this way. I'm going to want you to hold her like this. Okay. Hold her like this. Mm -hmm. But like her feet, and you just push her straight down. Okay. Get those wings. Yeah, those feet are fine. Just okay, you're fine. Get the, get this wing down, sweetie. Those wings. Okay. No, you're not. Okay. No, you're not. No, no. So let's slow down here just a second to explain. This is Cirrus. She's a prairie falcon, one of our wildlife ambassadors, as well as one of Martin's falconry birds. At present, she is unhappy. And so are Susan and Martin for this necessary uncomfort as they prepare her for falconry season. There'll be more about that explained later. For now, please know this is not a sick or injured animal. This is one of Martin's falconry birds, and Martin is a master falconer. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to wrap her in the towel. I'm going to get her in position, wrap her towel, and you're just going to hold her, okay? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Here we go, little girl. Okay. Come here, baby girl. Now, we're not going to mess around here. No, not over the head. It's going to come this way. Now, you hold her. There we go. Okay, baby. Okay, serious. I know, sweetheart. See what this looks like. fast as I can. She really is a good falcon. Yeah, she is a very good little girl. Really, she's my, well, Willie I loved, but you know what, I really love Cirrus. I was going to say these are the two best falcons you've ever had. Except Willie was a dynamite flyer too. Mm -hmm. And you're just okay. <laughs> she's got a good personality. Does that mean she's ugly? No. You've got a good personality. Yes. I'm just She's eating. not the best flying falcon you ever had. <laughs> but she's got a better temperament than most. Some of your best flyers have the worst temperament. It's okay, Susie. Sorry, sweetie. I'm going to take her feet. No, I'm going to give her up on the dog here for a second. Hey, baby girl. 
This just needs to be touched a little bit. That needs to be done a little bit. Okay. Okay, if you can kind of grab her, just, just hold her. Yeah, I don't, uh, most falconers do this themselves. They don't want vets to do it. There's a bit of an art to this. And we don't want the, uh, we don't want the right length. I have to get this back to its original, original length and shape. Darn close. And her talons are right. Yeah, I think her talons, yeah, her talons are fine. Okay. Hi, sweetie. I know. So abused. Poor baby. Yes, poor girl. Okay. Looks much better. Much, much better. Your telemetry, I think, is going to be okay. Yep. Can I explain why you, how and why? Okay, what, what we're doing here right now is uh, we're preparing her for the falconry season. And part of preparing for the, her for the falconry season is um, we have to make sure that her talons are sharp and, and at, at the appropriate length that they need to be. And these are actually razor sharp and they're the appropriate length, so that's very good. Um, her beak needs to be reshaped. In the wild, what happens is they rub their beaks on rocks and branches and helps keep the beak worn down. Um, and so, but in captivity, they don't do that as much. And so, what we have to do is we have to come down and 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 basically shape. Usually, the take the tip uh, gets a little bit too long, and we have to shape it so that it's it's just like it was when she was a young falcon. So that it's got it's got the right shape and the right length, so she can eat properly, uh, and and then we have a, a small little mount right here on her tail. I don't know if you guys can see that very well or not. We have that little mount on the tail, and that holds a radio transmitter. So when she's out flying, she'll go thousands of feet in the sky, and she'll come overhead, and she wants me to flush out ducks, pheasants, and pigeons for her hunt because she's a falcon. That's what they do, and if she catches something you know, a mile or two or three miles away, 
I have to go find her. And, and the way that we do that is I have a, a radio receiver that goes with the transmitter we put on her, and I can track her down and, and be able to get uh, right to where she was. And, and then she, she gets to eat whatever she catches, and then whatever's left over comes back to our wildlife rescue center to feed the injured wildlife that we care for. So she helps provide food for the injured wildlife that comes into our rescue center. And yes, I know, it's a rough time. And this is something we have to do every year, and, and we really hate to do that, but uh, we have to have her very, very still so that, every, so that I don't hurt her when I'm coping her beak, or, I, or, I, or this, this uh, little clip d aligns properly so that it doesn't in, uh, get in the way of her feathers when she's flying. So it's kind of technical, and we have to do it just exactly right, otherwise you know, we'll have other problems we have to deal with. But yeah, you're calming down now. It's better, huh? Is it better, sweetie? How old is she now? Uh, she's, what, three years old now? I think she's three. Cirrus? Okay. Yeah, Cirrus is three. So she's a good little girl. Okay, well, let's get her put out, and then we got to do the, the uh... Absolutely both love him. Martin hated Speak leaving for him. yourself. <laughs> Martin absolutely hated leaving him. He says, I hate to leave him in a kennel. He says, it's not a kennel, it's a home. He's... I did not say that. <laughs> huh? You you felt bad leaving him behind in a kennel. It wasn't fair. Well, I fair. felt bad because he was going to be heartbroken that he got left. I know. Huh. Even though it's okay. a wonderful place. I'll shut up. <laughs> Thank you. This is going to be a lot worse. I know. Okay. Cirrus was the good bird. Yes, this is going. To, she's going to be worse. I got her hooded. Yes, I know, sweetie. Do you want me to stand up? Well, again, I will let let me get her wrapped first, and then and then and then you take her. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, let me do it. I know. There's my girl. There's my girl. Okay. It's out of the way. Okay? Yeah. We don't need to uncover it. No, she's got air room there. I just didn't want you to suffocate her to get suffocated. I know. I'm being so cruel. I sorry, sweetheart. Okay. There's her deck. What's the card for? Keeping glue from getting onto the other feathers. That's what the card is for, so we put that right there. Very smart. And uh there's, there's my little scissors. A little space here for her. Right. See, this is the most still she's ever held for me. Mm-hmm. It's okay, baby. She's usually a lot worse than Cirrus. Mm-hmm. I, I, I basically got her fast. So she didn't have time to, to be fighting. I guess when you know what you're doing and you can do it quickly, it's much better for the birds or it, for any animal. It is. Much, much better when you can do it fast. I know, sweetie. I'm sorry. Get this on you.
These little tail mounts stay on for the whole season until they molt their feathers. Mm-hmm. Are these the same ones that you used last year? Yes. Now once you've, you can use them for a couple of years in a row, but not much more than that. And you, you make these mounts yourself, don't you? I do. I make these. I make a lot of my own equipment. It's important to be able to do that. Okay. Yes, I know, sweetie, I know. If it dries, that should be fine. She's still got a few old tail feathers, I can see. Yes, she they're does. All, they're all broken up in different color. Are you going to let go of her or not yet? Oh, she knows. She knows I lost my grip. It's okay. There's my girl. There's my girl. Come here, sweetie. Come here, bitchy. Okay, let's see what we got here. Yeah, that's got to get cooked a little bit, too. And let's see what the talons look like. Talons are okay, but your beak needs a little coping. Not a lot, just a little. Okay. Both sides. Yeah, just a little bit. I'm sorry, sweetie. But you got your telemetry on. Okay. Maybe you can get her, get her for just a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, just, okay, just push her down. There we go. Shh, shh, Now when a vet does this, like I said, they, they're, they're not as familiar with it as I am. And the other problem is they want to put the bird to, they want to uh, put the bird under anesthesia to do this. And that's really hard on the birds as well. Because the vet doesn't want to have to, to deal with a, a, a mad bird of prey that that's could, could be dangerous. Stress is bad for them, but anesthesia is worse. Yes. And so we try to get this just, the faster we can do it and get it done, the less stress for the animal. And you've got so much experience with this, you know exactly what you're doing and how it's supposed to look. <coughs> yes, sweetie, we're almost done. Uh-huh. Looks good. There's my girl. Nice to have a couch to fall back on. There's my pretty girl. Okay, BG. Yeah. Sorry I was so mean to you, sweetheart. I'm very sorry about that. It just had to be done. I didn't want to. But it had to be done. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. It just had to be done. Yeah. Oh, that looks much better. Very good. You got your telemetry on. And that big long goshawk tail of yours. You got your telemetry on you. Yes, baby girl. Now the, the mm. falconry season is the season they can hunt. It runs six months, correct? Yes, it starts with the first of September and runs to the uh, end of February. And that's the time that we can take these birds out and let them fulfill what I call their biological destiny, and that is to allow them to, to go hunt like a wild like a wild hawk. And so the season has started, and she and she's we have to wait till they molt all their feathers and grow their new ones in. But in the first year, and this she's a year old, so this is her first molt, and they will frequently not molt all their feathers. And so she's got several tail feathers. And several, uh, these, these are, are the secondary feathers in the wing right here, several secondary feathers that haven't molted through, and a little bit on the shoulder here that hasn't molted through. And, and so she will not have a full adult color until next year. And so right now we're just starting to, to uh, get, them, get, get them handled and exercised and, and, and so that hopefully in a really probably about a week, She'll be flying free, and uh, and we can go out and let her have 
her fun, which is to go go out and chase rabbits. That's her favorite thing to do. Huh, sweetie? So the molt's over as far as it's going to go, and now you get to go play. So the purpose for not having the falconry season all year long. Yes. Well, the reason for not having the falconry season all year long is very simple. During the springtime, when when the, the ducks and the pheasants and the rabbits and everybody have babies, and you don't want to go kill a mama duck and have the babies die. Does that make sense? So so basically, basically all we're doing here uh, during the falconry season is mom and dad are no longer caring for the young. They're all the young are full grown and on their own. And... Um, and I, I know for some people the idea of, of hunting is a, is a bad thing, mm -hmm. but whether she was with me or whether she was in the wild, it wouldn't matter. She'd still be hunting. Right. And, and the only difference is um, she allows me to come along and, and, and we work together as a team, and, and then it, she uh, allows us to, to take her for our educational program so we get people up close and personal to this beautiful animal, and they get to see what, what wild birds of prey are, are truly like. Um, you know, these are never domesticated. These are always wild. And, and so... I have one more yes, question girl. for you. Mm -hmm. This is something that people will find interesting because it involves all birds, and most people don't understand what a blood feather is. I can see blood feathers on her wing behind you, mm -hmm. the, other side, the other wing. Turn her this way, right on the inside edge. Yes. And it's I don't a little, know if you a little hard for people to see, up. but um, what, you, what you're seeing there is... What a blood feather is, is a new feather that's growing. And there's, and there's one right here too. Ba basically, when they drop a feather, the feather falls out, uh, and they grow a new feather in. The feather doesn't grow in as a solid feather. The feather grows in through basically a protein tube, like a straw. And that straw is full of blood. And that blood is what nourishes that feather as the feather continues to grow. And then once the feather is completely grown, the, the, the blood recedes back into the body and, and the, that little protein straw basically starts to peel off. And so, um, she, yeah, she's, she's got a few, a few new feathers that are still growing in, which means that we don't want to bring her weight down because we, don't, we want to make sure those feathers grow properly. So we, we don't bring her weight down very, very much. So right now we're just kind of handling her and feeding her and getting her into the routine. Um, but she won't be seriously hunting for, for another week or two. I just figured people would be interested because a lot of people have pet birds in a cage. Right. And suddenly and, there's and blood. I don't know, can, you, can you see that right there? And, and suddenly they, they see blood in the cage from yeah. their pet bird and they don't know what happened. And, and so that little feather right there, if that little feather were to break in right in that little protein straw, and I know it's hard for people to see and she's not going to open a wing for it, but if that if the protein straw is full of blood, if, the, if that breaks, it bleeds. And in most cases, the blood coagulates and it's fine, but occasionally, if, if it's a large blood feather, it can bleed quite a bit. I actually have to extract the broken blood feather uh, and then a new one hopefully it will grow back in its place and hopefully be a little bit more careful so they don't break it again. Um, so the, their feathers, you know, because these are, are, they fly and because they are hunters, they're, you have to be very, very meticulous with their feathers. The feathers have to be in extremely good shape, otherwise every broken feather affects their ability to fly and hunt. And so if you have too many broken feathers, they can't fly. And, and another topic for another day would be imping, if we ever have somebody to photograph that. Yes, we, we can. Once a feather is full grown in, like, like these adult tail feathers are, um, and a feather breaks, I actually make a little carbon fiber needle that I will uh, shove into the quill of the feather and glue it into place to, to take the feather and repair it. Because, like I said, every broken feather damages the bird's ability to fly, so we try to repair them as, as much as possible. And so, yes, I know, BG, and such a baby. The law is people cannot possess even a feather of these birds. It is you... against the law to have feathers from any bird of prey, not just eagles, any bird of prey, period, without a federal permit. And now, with the exception is because I'm a falconer and because, I, and because I'm a wildlife rehabilitator and I have these animals, I can have these feathers, but only for the purposes of repairing broken feathers. Because I remember you did that on an eagle that had a lot of broken feathers. You were able to take feathers from another eagle, from your eagle that had molted. Yes, I was able to take from, from my eagle his, his feathers that he molted through, and I, and I keep them, and then when, when a bird comes in that has broken feathers, I can fix them and, and have the bird ready to be returned to the wild and not have to stay in captivity 
for six months to a year before it grows new feathers. And you have to find the exact feather to, to fit just right. Yes, you do, and that and that's a little complicated. You know, this goshawk has 12 tail feathers, and each one is different, and you have to... I know, BG. And you have to be able to pick the right tail feather so that, so that it's the, the, has all the right shapes and curves, uh, and so you match tail feather to tail feather. And so it does get a little bit complicated. Poor BG, I guess I've passed enough Yeah, questions. BG needs to go back out and settle. She says, you've tortured me terribly today. She and is I'm so going beautiful to be, with her adult plumage. I'm so. going to be very angry with you this afternoon when, you, when we're working together. Oh, yeah. I know. She, she holds a grudge. She does hold a grudge, but that's, that's okay. You know, that, you know uh, as I always say, wild is wild, and these are never pets. These are wild animals. And, uh, and you know, you have to accept the fact that... Uh, that they're wild and, and, and never, ever, ever a pet. Well, come on, BG, let's get you put out. She'll appreciate that. Yes. She'll appreciate her bath. This is my book. This is called Healer of Angels. And uh, I need to get them ready for, for a program, because when I, when I do my wildlife programs, I take copies of my book, and we sell them as a fundraiser uh, for our wildlife rescue center. And so it helps us raise money to feed the animals. So if you ever like uh, animal stories, this is 40 years of wildlife rescue stories and the wisdom of grandparents. And I, my wife and I, we autograph each and every one of them, but what's even more important than me autographing the books is that um, you get my eagle's autograph as well. This is, here, this is a rubber stamp of my eagle. His name is Scout, this is his footprint. And what we did is we took the, uh, put a little food cutter color on the bottom of his foot, let him walk around on a, on a big piece of paper, chose the very, very best footprint from that, and we had a rubber stamp made of it. We stamp each and every book with Scout's footprint when you buy them directly through our Wildlife Rescue Center. And so that's what it looks like. That is, that's Scout's footprint. And then I autograph the book, and my wife autographs the book. If you, if you buy the book directly through our Wildlife Rescue Center website, um, all of the profits from the sale of the book go to help feed sick, injured, and orphaned wildlife. And, and that's the only way that you get the autographed copy. So, so that's kind of an incentive for people to, uh, to help us and, and buy the book. And, you know, and there's a lot of fun stories in the book. There's, there's stories in the book about the first elephant I trained. There's stories in the book about um, working with big cats. There's stories in the book about vulture vomit. And, and so it's, it's really, it's, it's a very fun read and for the family. And, and the prophets, like I said, really help us feed the sick, injured, and orphaned wildlife that we care for. As always, uh, every little bit of support helps. So please like, share, and subscribe uh, to our uh, YouTube channel. And... Uh, help spread the word about the Southwest Wildlife Foundation and, and the good work that we do here.